Bienvenidos, who's Shamdeed, and welcome to another Netacad Introduction to Python course supplemental video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're going to be focusing on a tricky little lab here, lab 3.1.2.14, the essentials of the while loop. And I've put a colon there, and we're talking about building pyramids. So let's dive in and let's take a look at the requirements here. And I'm actually going to be sort of whiteboarding out some stuff for you to give you an idea as to the logic that I used to come up with uh, the solution that I have. So you can see here, this is a difficult lab, 20 to 30 minutes of time. And it probably is going to take an introductory learner a little bit longer than that to sort of work through and come up with an algorithm that's going to address all of the different use cases that might pop up. So level of difficulty medium, and it's all about the while loop, right? So it should be pretty straightforward, but excuse me, this scenario is going to be a little tricky. So we've got some wooden blocks and it looks like a builder and his son are going to be building the pyramid here, right? Or they're going to be building a pyramid based on the number of blocks entered in by the user. This code is already provided here. So you can see they've got the variable blocks being instantiated. We're going to be uh, receiving the value that the user enters in, and we've got the explicit type conversion or the type casting taking place right here by converting the default data type that the input function returns, which is a string, we're converting it to an integer because, again, we're dealing with the number of wooden blocks that are going to be used. Now, we are also provided with this code right here which is the height of the pyramid and the variable that we are going to have to be creating or instantiating is going to be height. Now, we've got some requirements that we need to take very special notice of with this pyramid and how the pyramid can be built. So based off the number of blocks that the user provides to us, we are then going to determine how high, how many levels, what is the height of the pyramid that can be used uh, by building with those blocks. Now, here's a little caveat. The height is measured by the number of fully completed layers. Now, when I first looked at this problem a number of years ago, uh, when it showed up in the curriculum here, is Notice the pattern. I always like to look for patterns. Well, for level one, how many wooden blocks are we using? We're using one. For level two of the pyramid, how many blocks are we using? We're using two. For level three, and again, kind of you know, driving this point home, we're using three blocks. And if we had a fourth level here, we would have how many blocks? We would have four. So what do we know? We know that the number of blocks required to finish any level fully is going to be the number of that level, right? So, or we, we can say height, right? So if the height is one, it's going to require one wooden block. When the height is two, it requires two wooden blocks to get to that height. So in other words, we have to have more blocks than the current height, right, of the height that we're going to be building in order to complete that level fully. So while there are more blocks or while the number of blocks is greater than the current height, we're going to be able to increment uh, the height value and to complete that pyramid. Now, I've built something out here, right, to kind of take it out a little bit further than the three levels. And you can see I just basically staged this, uh, where if we wanted to get to level six, we would have to have six blocks. And again, working with the algorithm, if it's true for the first couple of iterations that we work through, it should stay true all the way through. And I'm going to come back to this as we kind of take a look at some of the uh, different values or the test data 
that we're going to be putting in. And you can see here, if I had six wooden blocks, the height of the pyramid would be three, right? Because again, uh, it would take, if I draw it out real quickly here, for a height of three. So we've got one and there's two and three and then four, five and six. So for a height of three, right? Height one, height two, height three, we would require a total of six blocks. But again, remember, the number of blocks is going to have to be greater than the previous height in order to continue. Because if I don't have four additional blocks left over here, right? We would need four wooden blocks to complete that level. Then I would not move forward with building. And that's what we're going to be checking. That's why we're checking to see if the number of blocks that remain is greater than the current height. So if the current height is three, the number of blocks that would have to remain at a minimum to be strictly greater than the previous level, which is three, would have to be what at a minimum? It would have to be four. And so again, this is, it's, very tricky if you don't sort of draw it out and, and try to walk through logically what's going to happen. Because when we decrement, right, we're decrementing the previous number of blocks that would be used, which is the height of the level that was just built. We can't decrement by one, right? You wouldn't just say, oh, I'm taking one block away. And that's a that's a mistake that a lot of learners will make initially is they'll decrement the number of blocks by one. Well, that doesn't work because it requires me, and again, specifically looking at this example here, to complete this third level, how many blocks do I need? I need three. So if out of the pool of blocks the user entered in, uh, I only remove one block to complete this level, uh, then I've made a mistake because it requires three blocks to build this level. So now that we sort of have the logic laid out, right, let's go ahead and add or create the code that would be required. So we'll come out here to the Python Integrated Development Learning Environment or idle, we've got a file sort of pre-staged for 3.2, uh, or I'm sorry, 3.1.2.14. So the code that was provided blocks. So the user's gonna enter in some number of blocks. Well, again, the pyramid hasn't been built. So we're going to be starting with a height and that's why they've got this variable kind of down here sort of to, to trigger us to say, hey, you're going to have to instantiate this at some point. And again, we're going to start with a height of zero. So while the number of blocks is greater than the current height. So that is the while statement that we're going to be working with here. Now, let's talk this through. So the first iteration that we come in, and actually let me change the color out here. Yellow works with a black background, not so much with the blue and uh, sort of white that we have. So while the number of blocks is greater than the height. So if the user enters in zero, that's it. We're, the while loop is done because zero is not greater than zero. But if the user enters in one block, right? Because one block is enough to build a pyramid I'm not much of a pyramid, but a pyramid of one block, right? And that would ultimately end up being the top of the pyramid. But if the user enters one in, right? So we'll scratch the zero here. Is one greater than the current height of zero? It is. And that would complete that level. So the first, or I should say the next thing I'm going to do, the first thing in the while loop is that if the number of blocks is greater than the height, meaning at a minimum, it just needs to be one because that current height of zero, we don't have the pyramid built. But if the user puts in one block, just one block at a minimum, that is gonna be enough for me to build the first level of the pyramid, which would ultimately be 
that top level of the pyramid. So I would say that the height is going to be the height plus one, right? So I've completed that level of the pyramid. So at this point in the while loop, the height of the pyramid is one. So if the user entered in one, the blocks is greater than the height because the height was zero. So we come in here and we say, you know what? We just completed one level of the pyramid. Now, what about the blocks? And, and this is why the learners, and it's interesting, when I speak with the learners about what their thinking was behind this piece of code, and this is gonna be, sorry, uh, this is gonna be the mistake, is that the learners will come in and they'll do this, right? They're gonna say blocks uh, with a minus equal, so blocks would be assigned the value of the number of blocks minus one. Well, if the pyramid only ever used one block for each level, right? In other words, and this is where I, I like drawing things out. If the pyramid looked like this, right? And we only had one block required, then, and that's a terrible pyramid, uh, ter blocks. But anyway, you get the point, right? Then yes, decrementing by one block that is gonna work for this, but that is not the pyramid. That's not what we're doing, right? We are building this. And so we know that the next level, the next height is going to require two blocks. And so that's where we need to take into account that the number of blocks we're removing from the pool of blocks that the user has entered in needs to be in line with whatever the height was that it just completed. So a user enters in one, right? The height gets incremented to one and then the blocks is decremented by whatever the height value is. So we put our one block in here, let's do this. The user enters in one, right? So is one greater than zero? Yes, this checks out true. So we come in here, we increment the height to one. That is my one block, right? And the height of that pyramid is one. So then we decrement from the blocks the current height, which is now one. So when we come back up here, height is gonna, I'm sorry, blocks is gonna be zero put a little slash through there. And so is this true? No, so that's it, we're done. With one block, we can only build a pyramid that has a height of one. Now, let me go ahead and clear this out. And let's put in a number where we're not going to be able to complete the pyramid, but we'll walk through uh, the while loop and the algorithm that we've just created here. So what if the user enters in four as the number of blocks. So is four greater than zero? It is. So we increase the height by one. And remember, each level requires the number of blocks that correspond to that level or that height number. So the height gets incremented to one. There's my one block for level one. So now blocks is decremented by the value of the height. So it's, it's decremented by one. And that makes sense because the first level is a single brick. Now we've got three, or I say brick, block. We've got three wooden blocks left. So we come up here again. So we say three blocks is three greater than zero. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, at this point, the height would be one. So is three greater than one. Scratch out the zero there. And the answer is yes, it is. So we increment the height again, but we increment it by one. So now the height is two because how many bricks are required to increase the height here? We'd have to be able to increase the height, uh, increase the height by one. We have to have two bricks, one and two. And so now, I'm sorry, I'm using bricks and blocks synonymously. So now with the number of blocks, we decrement the current height. Well, remember, when the height was one, we came in here, now the height is two. So we're taking away two of those blocks that we needed right here. So if I take two from three, we end up with one. 
So now the height is two and the number of blocks is one because with four blocks, I would only be able to get one more block there, right? That one remaining block. But is that one remaining block more than the previous level? Because at a minimum, to be more than two, it would have to be at least how many blocks? It would have to be three. And so that is why this algorithm, again, this is a very tricky little problem here, especially for introductory or beginning learners. But if you get a piece of paper out and you kind of write it down and you find the patterns, you can easily deduce that we increment the height when the number of blocks is greater than the height because the, the height number is going to be the number of blocks required to complete that level. All right, again, I wanted to explain this rather than just throwing the code up here and saying, yeah, hey, here's all that's required, there's the answer. It's more important to understand why we're coming up with that answer. And again, that mistake that I showed you earlier, the mistake here by decrementing the blocks by one instead of the height is very common because the first time through, you see, oh, well, we, I've got that one block I'm gonna be using. So I decrement by the block. The problem is the next iteration in, you're gonna run into trouble because it requires two blocks out of your pool of blocks that the user has entered in. So let's hit F5 and let's run through this here. Uh, we're gonna do 620, 1,000, and two. So I say six, and then we say 20. We should get five, and then I say 1,000, and we get 44, and then I say two, oops, sorry, we didn't want that. Let's escape out there, let's do F5. And then I say two, and we get the level of one. Now let's get crazy here. Let's see, what if I was to put in here that this is the number of blocks that the user entered in? The pyramid would be 44,720 uh, levels, or high, it would be that high number of levels. And again, you're not gonna to wanna to draw this out, but that's the nice thing when we work with the smaller numbers, right? And we get an algorithm that we can trust with the smaller values that we've drawn out, uh, then you can use it with the bigger numbers and it should stand up. All right, well, that is going to wrap up this uh, uh, supplemental tutorial on lab 3.1.2.14 where we used a while loop, and again, not a lot of code required to get this to work, right? After we uh, worked through and saw what a common error might look like, you can see that it's a very straightforward block of code, but a little tricky to come up with what that block of code might look like when we first take a look at the, the scenario that was laid out in front of us. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped you out. I hope my explanation was clear and sort of gave you an idea that if you ran into another problem similar to this, that you might be able to work it out. Again, work it out on a piece of paper, draw it out, find the commonality, find the pattern that you're gonna be working with, and then you take that and you convert it into the code that you're gonna to need to solve the issue. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Best of luck to you out there in your studies, and I hope to see you in the next video.